Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to have a general discussion about foot care. Hopefully it give you lots of things to think about, put some new ideas into your mind and give you some new tools and things that you can try if ever you're struggling with your feet on the trail. Now this conversation is as much relevant for somebody doing day hikes as somebody heading out there to do some long distance multi-day backpacking stuff. So hopefully i'll cover everything if i miss anything out that you feel is important please do pop it in the comments below let's get that conversation started so the beginning we know we're going out for a walk but what can we do before we even hit the trail to mitigate the chance of getting any sores blisters or hot spots first up we're going to think about our feet because that's what we're talking about right um, one thing we can do with our feet is to cut our toenails make sure our toenails are cut back not super short obviously so it's uncomfortable but long toenails can cause snagging on the socks which can move the sock position which can then cause uh, discomfort and the potential development of hot spots now just quickly if hot spots are a new uh, a new term for you basically what they are is where there's friction between your sock and the foot or the boot and your foot um, and if left untreated that would form a blister so obviously we want to always catch things at the hot spot stage because blisters are an immense enigma and they can be super small and yet intensely painful so we don't want blisters so that's what we're talking about trying to mitigate getting any uh, blisters from the hot spot stage so we've got cutting back our toenails. The next thing is socks. So we're sort of building this up here. So we've got our socks. Now, some people like to use a layering system with socks just as we would with our main clothing. So um, they like to use a liner sock, so a thin liner sock and then a thin outer sock. And the idea with that um, is basically to reduce the friction between your foot. So the friction would be, be between sock and sock rather than sock and foot. And I see the logic in that. Uh, for me, that's not something I personally use anymore. I used to. But um, I actually find it quite hard here in the UK to find a designated liner sock. I tend to just have to go for a thin walking sock and then another thin walking sock. And then it's more socks to carry. So I don't do that basically. Um, but I know some people swear by that method. And I just want to say good on you because I know that it can be very successful. So liner sock and an outer sock, that's something you might want to consider. Now then when it comes to your actual boots, making sure your boot fits well. You want a boot that's broken in so you've already sort of worn it in to shape around your foot. Maybe you've been using it around about the house, in the garden, taking the dogs out so you know that it's comfortable. Um, I always recommend people buy boots that are slightly too big, so maybe half or a full size too big because your feet swell up uh, throughout the day naturally. Everyone's feet do. Feet? Foots? Feet. <laughs> everyone's feet swell up um, it's a natural thing so by having slightly larger boots it means again you're just going to be nice and comfortable in that shoe and there's not going to be any sort of pinching points so uh, I'm, I don't want to go into detail about buying boots but definitely try before you buy maybe head into a store and talk to some of the specialists there because they know how to fit a boot they'll get you going up and down the little stony ramps and make sure it all fits fine and your heels in the right place so definitely try stuff uh, try out those boots before you buy them so we got the boots. The final thing I want to talk about before we sort of head onto the trail is uh, your lacing. Just make sure you've got your boot sort of laced up properly, not too tight. So you've got a little bit of slack there. So your foot uh, is secure, but it's again, not pinching. But don't forget, you can obviously always adjust your, your lacing as you go if you need to. There's lots of different ways to lace up boots rather than just the standard lacing method as well. Um, so I'll be making a separate video about boot lacing. So keep an eye out for that one. So there we go, we've covered sort of our precautions and now we're heading out onto the trail. But we've found, alas, we have a hot spot. What do we do about it? So I wanna sort of run through the different options that uh, I might consider when I'm out on the trail and hopefully some of them will work for you. So my first port of call will be this lovely stuff. This is Vaseline. So I literally just keep a little pot of this. I can use it on my lips as, as much as I need to as well. Uh, but I'll slap this on the hot spot and hopefully that'll do the job. Uh, basically it'll just take away some of the friction between the sock and my foot uh, i also just use this uh, if i'm doing like running so i've had great success with this with uh, marathon and ultra marathon stuff i don't do that so much anymore but honestly vaseline is a really great option uh, if you don't want to sort of dive into your blister treatment care stuff if you want that sort of first port of call uh, vaseline can be really great another thing you could use alongside vaseline if you want to go more natural actually is coconut oil so i melted some into this little jam pot i wouldn't carry this on a, a multi-day thing but coconut oil again oh it smells good <laughs> literally exactly the same thing use that just as you would the vaseline but that's not working we've still got a hot spot what's the next thing you're gonna do well you can jump straight on to sort of traditional oh it's getting windy it is getting windy <laughs> uh sorry you can jump straight onto your traditional 
uh, blister treatment. So this is a blister plaster. So you could slap this on and again, it's just a piece of plastic with a bit of fabric and hopefully that'll just help to um, stop some of that friction. Now for me personally, I would only ever use a blister plaster on the top of my foot or on my toes, uh, just cause they're quite thin and they can be a bit just awkward for me personally. Uh, if I have any sort of sores on the top of my foot, it tends to be because my feet have just been wet permanently or my boots are just constantly wet. So uh, blister plasters, they tend to work. And the nice thing about these is they're better than normal plasters because they're obviously designed for your feet and people recognize that your feet will sweat. So they're slightly stickier than normal plasters, which is great. So blister plasters can be the first port of call. Now this is something most of you guys will probably recognise, this is Compede, so you probably hear walkers talking about this at some point, some people absolutely swear by it, I don't personally use this, this is my dad's and I borrowed it just for the sake of this video, uh, but Compede essentially is like a plaster, it's waterproof, it's kind of got a gel in it, uh, it doesn't really feel very jelly, but the gel kind of just helps uh, with the repair and the regeneration of your damaged skin, so Compede can be great, it's quite pricey but I definitely recommend giving it a go and just see how you get on with it because if it works then that's fantastic and at least you've got that sort of instant solution so that's Compede. Now what I personally use um, for any sort of hot spots I get on my heels for example is this. So this is physio tape or KT tape um, and basically it's supposed to be used on muscles so I use it on my knee or on my upper back so my trap um, I've got injuries there and I use this for that uh, but also I use it for hot spots. So what I do is I keep this roll in my first aid kit as with all of this stuff I've sort of talked about and I'll take it out, I'll cut off a bit, I'll slap it on my heel and then essentially this piece of fabric is taking the friction so my skin is no longer taking that friction. This stuff is just amazing, it's been game changing for me. I only started using it officially last year uh, and I probably walked about 3,000 miles and I didn't get a single blister last year which is just insane uh, and this stuff you know really really helps with that on my heels especially so kt tape i know more and more people have started using this so physio tape definitely check it out again it's a little on the pricey side but i mean you know i've used this for over a year and there's there's another roll in here so much of this stuff it's just going to keep going forever i hope um the more you invest the sticky it's going to be and the more waterproof it's going to be so it might be worth forking out for a decent part like piece of physio tape and then hopefully it will last you longer because you won't need to keep replacing it on your foot. So check that stuff out and you can get different colours which is very exciting. Um, and the final thing basically when you're on the trail uh, and you're feeling a hot spot is just trying to air your feet as much as possible. If you're stopping for lunch or you, you've reached camp early just get your feet out of your socks and boots and get them airing exposed to the natural air around them and hopefully that'll just help them as well. So that's everything to sort of consider when you're on the trail. Uh, but we're at camp now, yay! So tents up, we've had a shower maybe if we're at a campsite or we've had a wash in a stream or something, I don't know. Uh, but there we go, that's the first thing I'll do to look after my feet at camp is to wash them. So if there is running water, then I will wash them in the running water. If there's not, then I'll use antibacterial hand gel stuff, just pop that on and again let them air dry, <laughs> smells great. <laughs> um, but that's kind of quite important just to make sure they're staying clean, get rid of some of the grit and the grime that's developed throughout the day. So after they've dried out from that, then before I go to bed, I personally use this stuff. Now this is basically a peppermint foot cream, uh, it's by the body shop, you can buy it sort of well, that's a big bottle and I tend to put it into these little bottles and then carry a little bottle, but you can buy it quite cheap online. It smells great actually. Oh, that's the smell of backpacking. <laughs> yeah, it does smell good. So I use this, I literally massage my feet uh, before I go into bed and I put this on, I rub it in, I'll leave it so my feet, my, blah. so I leave my feet so they're quite moist. Uh, there's a word for you. And then I'll put them into this. So these are my bedtime socks. So they're thick and they're nice and warm. And basically I will give my feet the space throughout the night to air and hopefully just calm down a little bit after carrying me all day for however many miles. So that's essentially what I do. Now other things you could do after washing them, some people like talcum powder, I'm not a fan but some people like to do that. Again, same thing, it's just trying to remove that moisture and just give your skin a chance to, to relax and get rid of any bacteria there. Uh, I don't know why I'm, I'm doing that like it's my feet but it's my boot. <laughs> Uh, another thing you could use if you really want to go down the natural route is Burt's Bees products. So these are foot creams, you've got coconut and you've got, what is this? Oh, it's French. Well, berries. That looks like raspberry. <laughs> raspberry foot cream, I'm not sure how I feel about that. 
Uh, but literally 99.4% natural, 100% natural, really good stuff. Pop this on your feet and it's gonna do exactly the same thing as the peppermint. It's gonna relax the muscles and just hopefully help that skin to repair for your next day of walking. So Burt's Bees products can be really great. Uh, another thing you could use, oh, here we go. We've got some stride out peppermint stuff as well. Peppermint seems to be the way to go. I don't know, I guess it's like mint, mint tea for your feet. <laughs> so stride out oil. And then we've also got this Gerwol foot cream, which is a German brand. Um, and this kind of like antibacterial and it's supposed to just sort of help prevent any itchy, blistery feet and just sort of look after them again. So they all pretty much do the same thing. I would definitely always encourage you to go more down the natural route because that's just personally what I like. And I think it's better for the environment if you're sweating out into the environment somehow. So um, just sort of consider the different options. Maybe try some different brands when you're out and about on the trail and see how you get on, see what relaxes your feet most and see what just sort of helps them to stay nice and strong and recovered for when you're on the trail. But that's pretty much it. So sort of drawing to a conclusion, we've looked at what you can do before you get onto the trail, what you can pack and use when you're on the trail to hopefully prevent any hot spots, and then what you can do when you're at camp just to make sure your feet are ready for the next day. So once you wake up the next morning, you can then revert back to any of the treatments that you might use on the trail. So if you have got a hot spot, let's cover it up in a blister plaster or some physio tape so that hopefully throughout the next day's walking, uh, you're not gonna get any more hot spots. Now one thing, sorry, I did want to mention is if you do get a blister, now I'm obviously not a medical professional, but personally what I do is I do drain them. So I'll sterilize a needle just with a little lighter and then I'll pop it in, drain out the fluids and just cover it over like that. Uh, some people don't like to do that, but for me that's what I like to do because in my experience it does speed up the recovery process. So that's basically what to do if, if you do get a blister. So there we go guys, general discussion about foot care when you're out and about on the trail. As I mentioned right at the beginning, if there's anything that I missed out, please do pop it in the comments below because I think it's really important to have this discussion. For people who are new to walking and long distance stuff, it can seem quite intimidating to have to face injury to your feet. So let's just bring some comfort into this area and share our tips and tricks so that hopefully people can have a better time when they're out and about on the trail. Thank you so much for watching guys. It's been really great having this conversation. And until next time, you know the drill, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. <laughs>